Hi and welcome to this overview of BIM360 Docs. My name is Yves Velaert and I'm a technical sales engineer at Autodesk. What we'll do during this presentation is briefly position BIM360 Docs and explain the rationale behind the development of the tool as the Autodesk data management platform for the construction industry. We'll then go into some specific workflows that will leverage the information gathered during a building project, optimizing communication during the construction stage. As we know, looking at the construction industry, managing data has never been more complex. It is still very much a 2D oriented environment in which plans have an important role. BIM technology has allowed us to easily generate 2D plans, sections and elevations, but this also means managing these documents and more importantly, the versions has only become more complex. Luckily, we don't need to carry around rolls of A0s on the construction side anymore, as the industry is rapidly adopting mobile technology to have these documents at their disposal in digital format. Lastly, it is obviously essential that we make sure that the right people get to the right information no matter where they are, no matter what device they are on. And of course, adhering to standards will help that collaborative effort. So to review, as the construction industry is a complex ecosystem of building companies working together, a lot of its efforts goes into cloud-based collaboration tools. Also, as mentioned earlier on, 2D is still the name of the game in construction. So tools to extract PDFs, use them in field apps for marking up, etc. are widely used. In fact, one can think about a specific requirement and there's probably an app out there to help out. However, that also means that a lot of information is dispersed in non-connected data containers. To make things even worse, we probably even have multiple versions of these documents residing in multiple environments. So when communicating, how to be sure we're sending the right info? This is where BIM 360 Docs comes in as the single source of truth for the construction industry, supporting 2D workflows to not only extract information, but also to follow up in the field with integrated functionality for marking up data, as well as assigning issues to specific persons or companies. In fact, the main key areas Docs is focusing on are exactly supporting these construction needs. Easily published 2D information, building on a secure yet convenient interface to share information, the power to view most file formats in use in the construction industry, and to extend the viewing capabilities to support redlining on or off-site. In short, BIM 360 Docs is the single source of truth when it comes to construction, no matter what stage you're at. So let's take a look at a workflow which takes us right from design into construction. The workflow described here will start by uploading Revit files. We will then use those files for coordination within Navisworks. And finally, we look at how this data is reused on the construction side. So obviously, we'll use the cloud to accommodate for all different stakeholders. One important aspect is to make sure that data can be reused but only the originator can edit their own files. Also, during the presentation, we'll discuss how we deal with metadata or attributes, and we'll show you how BIM 360 Docs tracks all changes as versions in the history of a document. But first, let's take a look at how we set things up. To create a project, we'll go into BIM 360 Enterprise in which we can define all BIM 360 related setup information, not only for BIM 360 Docs. This is a great benefit as we can reuse companies, users and projects across all BIM 360 tools. As we can see here, all information is organized into tabs, shown at the left hand side. To define a project, all we need to do is enter the relevant information after which we define the entitlements we need and the admins to manage it. In our case, we'll activate BIM 360 Docs for this project and assign our BIM 360 Docs administrator. To understand exactly who's assigned to the projects and what kind of disciplines are working on them, we can view a report that will give us the details. How many company members versus external collaborators, what type of projects we're working on, etc. Now that we've created the project, let's take a look at what that looks like within Docs itself.
As you can see, the environment has been split up into project folders and special folders, which have some added functionality supporting our construction workflows. We'll talk about the plans environment later on. One of the key aspects for data management adoption is its ease of use, which we're illustrating here by setting up a folder structure which could reflect our current mapped drives in the Windows environment. Finally, we can classify our documents by adding extra information or metadata to them. These are called attributes within BIM 360 Docs and are assigned at the folder level. Any document within that folder or subfolder will have the same attributes defined. In this case, we've defined an attribute called status. So we create the project. We've defined our structure. Time to add users and assign security to them. Before we're actually going into defining individual users, let's create the companies they belong to. This is also done on the enterprise level, so the companies and users can be utilized in any of the BIM 360 solutions. Creating a company is similar to creating a project. Within Enterprise 360, select the appropriate tab then specify the company's details. By assigning users to companies and users to the BIM 360 portfolio, we feed information into the reporting tool we mentioned earlier on. Time now to create the users. Selecting the appropriate tab, we define the email address and the company they belong to. When a lot of users need to be created, we can use a spreadsheet template provided by the environment to upload multiple users in one go. We can then add these users to the BIM 360 Docs environment and assign a role to them. Within the BIM 360 Docs environment, we can also create new users. This new user information will subsequently also appear on BIM 360 Enterprise. Lastly, we can set security on our different folders. This can be done by role, by company or by individual users. The system has been set up, so it's time now to put the system to use. We'll illustrate this in this section by adding information from Revit. On the one hand, we'll use the aggregated information for coordination purposes in Navisworks. On the other hand, we'll use one discipline's Revit file as the underlay for another discipline's work. We'll be using an NWC file as the basis for coordination inside of Navisworks. Each discipline can export the information out of Revit and upload the file to BIM 360 Docs. As it's uploaded, anyone with viewing access can then use the Large Model Viewer or LMV functionality in Docs to understand what exactly has been uploaded. We can drill down on project structure, get to specific objects and look at the object's properties. All properties, as defined within Revit, are retained and are exposed to the interface. For instance, any URL stored within a Revit object's properties can be used to browse to a more detailed explanation or documentation of the selected object. The RVT file will also be uploaded for other disciplines to consume the information as underlay for their own work. And remember, this is all role-based, so other users can view the information, but are not allowed to alter it on BIM 360 Docs. Again, the LMV can be used to verify other people's information. As the MEP engineer, we might, for instance, want to have an understanding of the flaws the architect has developed. When uploading information to BIM 360 Docs, we can actually decide what views and sheets we want to publish. The LMV can consult any of this information in 3D as well as 2D. No matter what view we're looking at, all the object information is still retained. So all NWCs have been uploaded. The coordinator can now retrieve all these files from our single source of truth, BIM 360 Docs, and use Navisworks Manage to analyze the delivered information. QTO, time-based project planning on the 3D model, 
crash detection, etc. We can then upload these results as an NWD file for others to review. And obviously, Docs is constantly keeping track of the activity on documents through the log file it's keeping. As tasks have been assigned to users, they can now return to Revit and update their model based on the feedback from Navisworks. We could even use the switchback functionality inside of Navisworks to open the same view in Revit. Having implemented the required changes, the file can then be uploaded to Docs as a new version. Within BIM 360 Docs, we're not only tracking activity on documents, we're also recording all versions of a document. That way, we keep history on all of our documents, when it was created and by whom, but we can also download all of a version's content if the need arises. We can use this to review files and then, through attributes, change a document's status, for instance. At some point in time, the project will get into the stage of construction. In other words, we're getting to execution. As we know, construction is an environment in which 2D information is very relevant and valuable. This is why BIM 360 Docs comes with specific functionality regarding extraction of 2D information out of a BIM project. Here we'll be looking at some workflows around PDF and RBT files. This functionality is what sets the plans folder apart from the project environment. When uploading to plans, 2D information is automatically extracted as separate data entities. These can then be used downstream for redlining, assigning issues, etc. We'll first take a look at the PDF workflow. We'll set up the system as we see fit. It means we can create subfolders, assign rights, and define metadata, just as we did within the project folders. As it's relevant to understand who's been working on a specific sheet, we'll define this as an attribute. When we now upload the PDF file, we can define the title block area and OCR the properties within to be mapped to our attributes. As we might have different formats and different stakeholders, the system helps us in standardizing by providing us the capability to store title block extraction templates. Within such a definition, all we need to do is define the location and size of the title block, then define areas where the different properties are located and link them to our BIM 360 docs attributes. Once we have defined our title block, an automatic process will scan the different sheets in a multi-sheet PDF and will fill in the metadata for us. We can then review to check if the OCR recognized the information correctly. Once we approve, the file is split out into separate sheets and the metadata in each sheet is extracted to the attributes. Also, when hyperlinks exist within the original multi-sheet PDF, these will be active in the LMV as well so that we can navigate from sheet to sheet, keeping our data organized. A similar workflow can be applied to Revit files. We are not extracting the information out of the title block, but the system will indeed extract the different sheets and views that we specify. This is done within Revit by selecting all relevant 2D information in the Publish Settings in the Collaborate tab. In fact, we could even run a Dynamo script that will track approved sheets within Revit. For more information on the script, check out this blog. Now that all information has been uploaded and relevant sheets have been extracted, we can take it to the next level, review the information. When it comes to checking sheets and views, we can use markups to note down our remarks as an overlay on the sheet. We can choose from a variety of tools such as text, arrows, circles, etc. Also, markups can be assigned a color so that we get immediate visual feedback. For instance, we could specify in our protocol to use specific colors for specific disciplines. All remarks are stored and can be easily reviewed when selecting the sheet. If need be, we can attach extra information such as technical specifications as PDFs, etc. As we're moving into construction, 
chances are that some of the information is being fed back from the construction side. To support these construction workers, BIM 360 Docs comes with a mobile app that we can use to register or review remarks as we're noticing them in the field. We can then take action to update the design and sheets. When uploading to the plans folder on Docs, this will generate a new version for each sheet uploaded. That is why it's relevant to track which sheets need to be updated and automate the process of specifying the list of sheets to be published through the Dynamo script I mentioned earlier on. Over time, the amount of sheets that need to be managed within the plans environment can become significant. And again, BIM 360 Docs helps us in managing this by providing a thumbnail overview similar to the mobile interface. Within these thumbnails, symbols help us to understand which versions are new, which ones are updated, etc. In fact, the thumbnail also shows which entity has markups and issues, which we'll discuss next. So we know which versions are updated based upon a markup. But how do we know if the change is correct? Well, BIM 360 Docs allows us to compare two versions of the same entity. This can be done in overlay mode or side by side. Even if the data stored on Docs doesn't come from a BIM authoring tool and all information is stored in non-related 2D sheets, Docs can help us by comparing two separate sheets so we can check, for instance, that different levels are indeed aligned correctly. As markups and issues are persistent, meaning they remain even when the sheet gets updated, we need to close the markup after verifying that the changes have been implemented correctly. The last topic I'd like to discuss is issue management. So again, we're moving further downstream. We're now at the stage where different construction disciplines are indeed creating the project on site. The design and plans themselves might be correct, but we might need to inform specific users or companies about the construction itself. As with markups, we can do this through the web interface or using the mobile app. In this case, while on the construction side, a docs user might have noticed a problem with the wall finish in a specific area. This can be noted down as an issue and assigned to a specific user, company or role. Also, we can set a date by which the issue needs to be solved. To clarify things, we can add a photo to the issue. By setting the issue from draft to open, it becomes active and the assigned user is informed by email. In return, they can review the information and give a preliminary answer. Within the interface, as is the case with markups, issues are also being tracked by sheet, giving us visual feedback as to the status of the different issues. If need be, we can also get an overview of all issues in our project. Lastly, the issue is solved and after verification on site, it can be closed. This concludes the overview of BIM 360 Docs. As you can see, BIM 360 Docs helps us in managing all information relevant to a construction project. Not only can we manage different file formats, BIM 360 Docs helps us in collaborating between different stakeholders, extracting information needed during construction, following up on challenges we encounter at the construction side, and providing an audit trail for all managed information. Thank you.